I just wanted to quickly talk because I've taken up a lot of your time, but I just wanted to ask you about thermal mass because this is something that we haven't really delved a lot into the podcast or on the blog, um, except that I've mentioned that it's a great way to hold warmth in winter and to keep, you know, a home cool in summer when you shade it. Uh, it's all about keeping uh, heavy materials that maintain sort of uh, a constant air temperature. Can you please give us a crash course 101 on thermal mass? Because I saw, you know, uh, comments in that, um, I think it was in my my, my electrical efficient, I'm going to get that link right and put it in the I resources. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's a fantastic Facebook group. Um, but as a pra- practice, how do you approach the inclusion of thermal mass and how, would you, how do you describe it to your clients in terms of its importance and use in a home? Sure. Um, our approach is to use the concrete in the floor as a thermal mass, the way we design, because we are so conscious of orientation and and we do, you know, the science modelling and things to, to maximise the, the amount of sun hitting hitting that concrete. So a, a high thermal mass um, substance or material is one that's really dense and can absorb a lot of heat and a lot of energy. And then Later in the day, so when the sun's shining and it absorbs it later in the day, if the temperature's dropping outside, it releases that heat into your hopefully very well insulated building envelopes to keep you comfortable. Um, so our approach is just to use the floor. Um, we don't, our designs don't benefit from additional thermal mass. You can have thermal mass in walls, so internal masonry walls. They're not cheap though, so they come with a cost. And so the way we design, they don't offer, the cost benefit doesn't add up. Um, in some designs in then houses where the orientation might be a bit trickier or for some reason it can be difficult to do concrete slabs so you might have a um, masonry floor and have some I'm uh, sorry a timber floor and you might have some masonry walls but I would stress to people if they want to include thermal mesh you have to be careful you can go too far you can work against you you don't want um, in summer in particular you must shade it you know you don't want that heat being absorbed in the slab and then re-radiating into the house on a summer night when you're desperate to cool down so it involves to use them on mass well you really need to design well and that's where I would suggest um, and the energy efficiency rating software is actually very clever at that so modeling that um, early on in the design process can help you decide whether it's worth adding adding more. I think we also, I mean, the other approach is light and tight. So you don't have to have thermal mass to have a really high performance home, particularly if you do go smaller and smarter. So the house actually has quite a small volume. So you, the space you're hitting and cooling is smaller. So we do a lot of renovation work as well. So those houses generally have suspended timber floors. In that case, we aim to um, insulate under that floor really well, as well as the walls and the ceiling, um, and make the, the building envelope nice and airtight and well ventilated. Um, and those houses also, we can get them up to seven and a half and close to eight stars sometimes too. So um, it's not impossible without thermal mass, but don't and don't think it's the it's the answer to all problems. And, and yeah. perhaps clarifying the difference between thermal mass and insulation, yeah. because I find that some people get a bit confused. Yeah, um, I was horrified at a conference I went to just the year before last sitting with a table of engineers who thought concrete um, also had high insulative value as well as thermal mass. Oh no, but concrete is a very poor insulator everybody, it can duct heat, um, yeah, you don't use it to insulate. Um, so yeah, they're, they're quite different things. So um, insulation is about stopping heat flow, um, thermal mass is about absorbing heat and retaining it to re-radiate it. So they are very different things. And again, that's where the, the modelling software takes all of that into ca- account and models that really cleverly for you to give you. So the energy rating, although it spits out a rating for an overall house, it also gives a rating per room and a predicted heating and cooling load. So you can really see where the weak spots in a house are and um, you know, really work to optimise things. Yeah, that's fantastic advice. I think more and more it's becoming obvious to to people that having that assessor on board, running the modelling in tandem with the design is a really useful approach. And I think that generally, you know, I keep encouraging homeowners to understand that renovating a building is best done as a team sport. In large businesses, it's always done that way. Every development I ever worked on when I worked for a large developer, we had everybody who could bring expertise to the table from their different disciplines part of that design process and I think that unfortunately what happens in homes is everybody silos all of that expertise or doesn't tap into it at all and instead if we can create that team approach it's going to create much better outcomes overall so
Hi, now before you go, I just wanted to share with you, there are three big mistakes that I see homeowners make when they're planning their renovation or building project. Mistakes that cause huge amounts of stress, cost overruns, time blowouts, and really ultimately make the journey of renovating and building much more difficult. Want to know what they are? Well, the first of those three mistakes is that people just dive into the process. They don't really prepare for it. They don't really understand what are the right steps to take and when, and they just barrel in. And I think homeowners do this because it's a big overwhelming process building or renovating your home. It involves a lot of big decisions, a lot of money, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, if you're only ever taking steps ahead, not really knowing the full picture, it's very easy to get lost, misled, end up in a completely the wrong spot and for it to be very expensive and time consuming to get yourself out of that position. The second mistake that I see homeowners make is they make themselves a target. A lot of homeowners tell me actually they feel like they're walking around with a target on their forehead just waiting to be taken advantage of. But unfortunately, a lot of homeowners don't do the work required to really inform themselves so that they know how to sift and filter the advice that they're receiving so that they know how to not fall for the dodgy operators and so that they know when they're being told something that they want to hear rather than what they need to hear. When you know how to put the right team of people around you and you know how to trust the advice that you're receiving, it will completely change the game for your renovation or building journey. The third mistake that I see homeowners make is that they don't invest in the design. The design, of course, is the lines, the spaces, the volumes that are drawn as, as lines on a page but end up becoming the rooms and the home that you ultimately ultimately live in. And so many homeowners really struggle because they know that this is something going to be long term, that their decisions are going to have a big impact on how they get to live their lives and yet really, really fear stuffing it up, making decisions that they think that they'll regret long term. When you know how to get the design right, how to create a home that not only works for you now but into the future, then you can move with certainty towards that future finished home knowing that it'll actually deliver the dream that you're hoping it will and create a beautiful lifestyle for you and your family. I would love you to check out my two online courses. I have one for Australian homeowners called How to Get It Right in Your Reno or New Home and I have one for American homeowners called The Welcome Home Course. If you don't know the steps from start to finish of your renovation or building journey, from the point of talking with your local authority through putting your team together, getting the design right, getting all of your approvals, choosing your contractor or builder and getting your home built, that's exactly what these courses will help you do. I lay out step by step my own system that I've been using in over 250 projects in over almost 25 years in this industry and and I explain it to you in a step-by-step -step way that you can put into action on your project. I also help you really focus on what are the core fundamentals of a well-designed home. What does it look like to achieve good design? I have got minimum recommendations for dimensions. I've got some key things to help really pull out of you what it's going to be that you want from your home so that you can really communicate that with the people that you're working with and get really clear on what's going to make a big difference for you and your family's lifestyle in your home. And I also have lots of tools and guides so that you can pull the right team together, you can sift and filter the advice that you're receiving, you can know that you're moving in the right direction, you can always be working to save money and time and stress and you can really get bang for buck in how you spend your budget overall so that you can make sure that you stretch that money that you have as far as it possibly can go and ultimately I, these courses are all about helping you create that future family home that you're dreaming of that is perfect for you and your family and that ultimately helps you feel great and that you feel great in. So again, for Australian homeowners, it's how to get it right in your reno or new home. And for American homeowners, I teamed up with Eric Reinholdt of 30 by 40 Design Workshop. He's an award-winning American architect based in Maine, and we created the Welcome Home course. The links are below for you to check out both of these courses. I would love to see you on the inside and really help you create that future family home that you're dreaming of and get it right whilst you save time, money, and stress.